Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to scale with Google ads to different countries. Now in a lot of my previous videos, I have always mentioned that Google shopping ads or just Google ads as a platform in general has mostly been for the US audience and that has really not changed that much. However, after doing a bit of testing myself with these different countries and after having actually run specific product campaigns to these countries, I have come to realize that it could actually be very, very powerful to be running advertisements, especially for your winning products, whether it's a winning product on Facebook or on Google Shopping for the US to these different countries. One of the biggest things I've come to realize is that people all over the world use Google no matter what country they live in or no matter what language they speak. And because of this, the demand for actually shopping via Google Shopping ads has increased tremendously. So in this video, I kind of want to go over exactly why it's so important to be scaling with these different countries, how it's different, while showing you some actual results right from my own Google Ads dashboard and actually give you the exact step-by-step -step process as to how you can get approved to sell to these different countries. Because yes, this process is not as easy as just launching a new campaign to a different country like you would normally do with Facebook. For Google Ads, you need to actually submit a feed for your products to this different country and then after it gets approved, then you can start running the ads. But Without wasting any more time, let's find out how to scale to these different countries. So, so before I actually reveal exactly how to start scaling to these different countries, there's one thing you want to do to really get the best results from this video, and that is smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Just kidding, but hopefully you do that anyways. These videos take a long time to make, but let's start off by talking about the first thing, and that is talking about the kind of traffic you could be expecting from these different countries. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, I used to say that 90 to 95% of the shopping traffic does come from the US and that is still true. However, I'm starting to notice a lot more countries are kind of getting involved with the Google Shopping Ads platform. And if we go ahead and look at the specific article right here, which can be found directly from Google, we can see that the specific list of countries which currently accepts Google Shopping Ads is tremendously big. As you can see, from Algeria all the way to Zimbabwe, these countries are accepting Google Shopping Ads and that also means people that do use Google within these specific countries have the option of directly shopping from the shopping ad. So that's what makes this video so important for you to watch until the end. But nonetheless, there's one simple process that you can be using to kind of get approved for all of these different countries. It's the same process you can repeat over and over. But as I mentioned, 90 to 95% of the shopping traffic is still from the US, but you can expect a decent sized amount coming from these different countries. And, and before I continue on with this video, I want to go ahead and take you guys over to my Google Shopping campaign dashboard to show you the difference between targeting just the US for a winning product compared to targeting a different country. So right now I have two specific campaigns chosen right here. Campaign number one at the top is for the US only for one of my main winning products that's currently running at this moment in April. As you guys can see, I've spent roughly $676 to get back 111 conversions and the conversion rate is around 5.16% to make back roughly $10,000 in sales. And no, this is not photoshopped at all. These are real statistics. But now I wanna go ahead and take you guys down to my second campaign I have chosen. This campaign is for that same exact product as in campaign number one. However, this campaign is directed towards Canada only. If we go ahead and look at the specific data right here, we can see that the CTR compared to campaign number one is much, much higher, almost three times higher at 4.50%. If we look at the specific cost, it spent around $87 to get back nine conversions. And the conversion rate is kind of lower, 3.61%, but the conversion value is $728.39. So as you can see, still very, very profitable. And the beauty is I just started this Canada campaign just a few days ago. And as you can see, it's only running at $50 a day compared to campaign number one, which is $80 a day. But that kind of shows you what you should be expecting from these different country campaigns. And if we look at one more data really quick, and that is the search impression share, which you can see right here, this is 65% for this product in the US, meaning I'm getting roughly 65% of the total possible searches that are done, meaning my product is winning those auctions to get shown for those searches compared to 93% over here for Canada. So as you guys can see, that should kind of let you know that the search volume for this given product is a little bit lower in Canada compared to the US. However, it's still very profitable. I'm getting a large search impression share from the total and the bids are actually the same for both countries. But now let's kind of continue talking about exactly why this is the way it is. So I want to start talking about how the competition is like for these different countries. It doesn't matter whether you choose Canada or UK or any other country that is currently accepted for the shopping ads platform. 
you can generally expect much, much lower competition in the other countries because Google Ads, believe it or not, is somewhat of a newer platform compared to the other platforms which are available. And people are just starting to kind of come onto Google Ads, which is why it's so beneficial for you to start scaling within these other countries. But in addition to that, as you guys clearly saw from my own data, you can generally be expecting a much higher CTR because I can almost guarantee you that not a lot of other drop shippers, a lot of other store owners would be selling the same exact product as you within these other countries. So you can kind of expect a higher CTR, but you can also be expecting kind of a lower number of impressions as you guys saw, because people may not be generally searching as much for that given product as they would in the U S for me, this is kind of a universal product, which I just showed you on my Google ads dashboard. So people in all countries are actually searching for it, but Nonetheless, lower amount of people can be expected than those from the US. But in addition to that, you can kind of be expecting kind of some lower scalability simply because again, with Google ads, you can only reach those people that are currently actively searching for your product. So if somebody is not searching for your product, you can't really force them to search for your product. So you can only get the searches or search impression share for the given searches that are currently happening in the market, which is why it's kind of lower scalability when scaling to these other countries. But nonetheless, still a good portion of money and ROAS can be added to your entire dashboard with these other countries, as you guys saw just from that one campaign on my own dashboard. But generally, you can also be expecting higher ROAS. I know for my own dashboard and my own Canada campaign, that was not the case simply because it is kind of a newer campaign. It still needs some time to optimize. But once it has fully optimized, once I've fully gone through the process, that I normally recommend on my YouTube channel when it comes to optimization. You can watch some of the videos. I'll leave the links in the description below. Then I can generally be expecting a higher ROAS. But in addition, scaling to these different countries kind of leaves you uh, with a lot more room to dominate the searches with similar products. So for instance, if you're selling a printer in the US and you find one specific printer, which is a winning product in the US, then you start scaling it within Canada, UK, etc. You can generally be expecting a lower number of competition for those specific countries which means that you have the ability to dominate more within those searches. So if this product turns out to be a winner in Canada and the UK as well, you can potentially add more printers that you find from AliExpress onto your store and within that campaign. So then those products get shown within the UK and Canada as well. So that kind of makes it easier to find even more winning products, which are similar to what's already selling. And these are some of the biggest reasons as to what makes me want to continue scaling internationally, especially in the countries where AliExpress shipping time is very, very fast. But before you do this, make sure that whatever supplier you're using from AliExpress for your winning product can ship to these other countries. You don't want to sell a bunch of products to these other countries only to find out that your AliExpress supplier does not support shipping to those countries, especially with the situation that's going on in the world at this moment when I'm recording this video, which is in April. But now that I've covered kind of the basics of why it's so important to be considering scaling internationally, let's find out exactly how to do that. And there are two very simple steps to this. The first step actually involves the Google feed app by Simprosis, which you can find through the Shopify app store. It is completely free for you to use until a certain number of products. But within this app, you want to be submitting the feed, you meaning your product feed to additional countries. And before I show you how that's done, keep a keynote that you should only be submitting the product feed to one country at a time. I'll be showing you how to do that. But within that specific list, you'll see the option to submit to multiple countries. You don't want to be choosing more than one because it could really mess up the settings within your country. It could cause problems with your merchant center account. So you don't want to do that. But generally, after you have submitted the feed within 12 to 24 hours, Hours, the feed should be properly integrated with your Google ads account, especially if you do step number two right away. But now let's go ahead and go on to my Google shopping feed app to show you guys exactly how this is done. So as you can see, once you open your feed for Google shopping app, this is the home page that you should be seeing. But now you want to go ahead and go to the top and you want to go to settings and choose the second option, which is called Google shopping settings. From here, we'll be scrolling all the way down to choose a specific setting which pops up regarding the feed. So once it pops up, this is what you should be seeing. Scroll all the way down until you see this option on the bottom right, which says submit feed to additional countries. Now you can read it through all of this to kind of get a better understanding of what they're saying here, but there is a 5% additional charge per country that you add. And this is not really a lot. It's mostly about 40 cents to 90 cents per country that you add. And this is a new amount that is that you have to pay in addition to what you're already paying per month. So it's not again, 
a huge amount. It's very, very cheap, only less than a dollar. So I highly recommend that you still go ahead and do this because I'm sure you have a dollar to spare to scale to these other countries. But what you want to do is you want to click on this button, which says manage additional countries. Once you do that, you will be taken to this specific page right here. And I highly recommend that you read it through the left side because it has a lot of important information here. What you'll see that it says do not add more than two countries in the first instance. However, I recommend that you keep it to one and don't add more than one just to be on the safe side. But once you get to this page, it's as simple as choosing a specific country and just hitting this little checkbox right here until it turns green. And once you do that, just scroll all the way down and just go ahead and click save additional country. When you do that, it'll take you to another page where it shows you what the total will be that you'll have to pay per month. Just go ahead and click accept. And once you click accept, it'll take you to a confirmation page where it tells you that the feed is currently processing. It's as simple as this on the Google Shopping Feed app. But once you have done this, you're not really done. There's step number two, which you have to do as well. And this involves your Merchant Center account. So once you have submitted your feed to these additional countries, now you want to go to your Merchant Center account and you want to choose the specific shipping settings you want to be charging for these specific countries. Because without doing step number two, your country's feed will not be active on Google, meaning you'll not be able to run ads to this given country. So after step number one, go ahead and open up your Google Merchant Center account. And on the home page, this is what you will see. You want to click this little wrench icon at the top. And once you click on that, go under tools to shipping and returns. We'll be setting specific shipping options for this specific merchant center account. So I already have one here, but we're going to disregard this. The only thing I want you to look at is these specific headings right here. So currently it says the area this specific shipping option is for is the US only. So we want to go ahead and click the plus button. And once you click the plus button, just give it a very standard name. I like to just give it the name of the country, which I want the shipping option for. So in this case, let's just do Canada shipping. And once you do that, you want to choose the service area right here. And of course, we're going to scroll all the way down and choose Canada because that's what we want. Now, once you do that, this is these are the very basic settings that you will have to set up. This can depend on your own AliExpress supplier. But in general, I just like to select the time for cutoff at 12 a.m. And you want to choose your specific time zone. And in this case, we're just going to, for example, choose uh, Alaska standard time. But once you do that for handling time, I like to leave this between three to seven days because sometimes AliExpress suppliers have issues. We want to leave this at a very broad range for days fulfilled. We want to do Monday through Saturday because Chinese suppliers work on Saturdays as well. It's not like the US where they take Saturdays off. So Monday to Saturday transit time for each different country. It's going to depend for Canada or the UK. I like to do 10 to 30 days to be on the safe side because sometimes packages do take up to 30 days to these international countries. And then again, you want to choose Monday through Saturday here as well. Once you do that, don't do anything for the advanced settings. Simply scroll down. And before you actually do this, you want to actually scroll to the top and for currency, choose the USD or whatever currency your store is currently in because this makes things much, much better and it will cause less problems when you're integrating your products within the shopping feed app as well. So make sure that the currency is chosen for your country. Since I'm living in the US, I'll do USD and then scroll all the way down to shipping rates. This is where you're going to choose a specific shipping rate for your specific store. So here I just like to do something like order price. Of course, you can do order weight if that's what your shipping options run by or you can do number of items. In this case, I like to offer free shipping over a certain amount of dollars spent. So in this case, let's say, for example, that I offer free shipping over $25. So what I would do is I would do for this specific option, I would do one cent to $25. I'll do specifically a fixed rate of, let's say, $3.43, because let's say, for example, that that's what I charge. And for $25 and one cent or more in total sale price, I'll do zero here because I don't charge them anything. I offer free shipping for all orders over $25. After you do that, make sure you choose a specific shipping rate name. I just like to give this the name standard shipping just to make it very simple and easy to understand. So standard shipping and just go ahead and click continue. Once you click continue, you're basically good to go. And if you did this correctly, this should be the color blue and it should say that all your products from your store have currently matched. So right now I don't have any products associated with this merchant center account. So it says zero, but for you, it should say whatever number of products you have. Once you have done that, then just go ahead and click save and you're basically good to go. Your fees are correctly set up as well as your shipping settings for the international country. And that's the basic two step as to how you can kind of start scaling internationally with these specific countries. But if you found any type of value in this video, smash that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and like this video to show support. But I'll see you guys next time.